So if you're like me, you pretty much keep up to date with VR news, updates, and speculations. And you probably saw that a game came out recently, Hitman 3 VR Reloaded. Now, this was a VR remaking of Hitman 3 VR, which came out years ago after the initial release of Hitman 3 to console. Hitman 3 VR came out on PSVR 1 and on PC. And I mean, I never played a Hitman game at the time, but I thought, hey, the idea sounds pretty gosh darn neat in VR. Playing as a Hitman just sounds like it would work. So I thought, hey, if this looks good, it's got good reviews, I'm gonna pick this up. But here's the problem, it didn't have good reviews. People were just bashing on its buggy nature, its jankiness, and it just didn't feel like a VR game is what a lot of people in the VR space were saying. And I didn't have money to splurge on something that people weren't saying was good, so I just didn't bother with it. But then fast forward a few years and you come back to about a month ago or so, I, I don't really know exactly when, but we got the announcement trailer for Hitman 3 VR Reloaded. This was a complete overhaul of Hitman 3 VR. It was made specifically for VR from Hitman 3, and it was a Quest 3 exclusive. Now, sign me up, right? Because this is the exact thing I wanted. A brand new, remade, for VR Hitman 3 game. Now, sure, the graphics weren't realistic or anything, but I mean, which Quest game isn't nowadays? And I thought, wow, this is going to be on the Quest 3 exclusively, one of the only games in development for Quest 3 exclusively. It's going to take full power of the hardware, maybe not graphically, but perhaps resolution-wise, or perhaps in terms of frame rate or, or some other situation. But if you're also like me and you sort of watch YouTubers on VR, you kind of watch the same five guys. You know, you got Gamertag VR, uh, BMF, uh, Beardo Benjo, and a lot of others in that space. You might have seen one of their reviews that came out today. And basically, this game sucks, according to them. But I'm going to trust them because it's not also them, it's also consumers. If you look on the MetaQuest store, this game has like two and a half rate, or two and a half stars or something. This is not a good VR game. And it's really concerning coming from someone who's been in this space for a long time. And it almost wants you to analyze why it's such a bad game. And I think it's in large part because it misled everyone. I mean, you gotta picture this. Hitman 3 VR came out years ago. And pretty much everyone forgot about it because it wasn't very good. But Hitman 3 was. It was very good. Now the developers weren't, I mean, I'm just gonna guess here. They weren't thinking, oh, let's remake, let's hire a studio to remake Hitman 3 in VR exclusively for the Quest 3 brand new graphics, brand new all this, make it really good, made for VR, for the money. I mean, like, come on. You're not going to be generating a ton of cash or revenue. Like, IOI probably wasn't thinking, oh, here we go. Here, here's our main money maker here. Hitman 3 VR Reloaded. That, that's where we're going to make your money. No, they probably, I mean, I'm just speculating, but they were probably f fans of the VR space and wanted to see their game in VR. So they said, hey, look, we're going to sublet this game to another studio or like, you know, sorry, like lease the lease the, you know, code over to them and have them develop everything and do it right because they are a VR porting studio. You know, they're going to do a pretty good job. Well, they didn't. It's $30. It's 24 gigabytes and it is exclusive to the Quest 3, the most powerful, basically consumer grade VR headset. And to me, this is really concerning. I mean, just think about it. This is like the first Quest 3 exclusive we've seen with worse, worse graphics than I would say a Quest 1 game. I mean, you could look at some Quest 1 games, Hell, like even Vader Immortal, which came out like at the Quest 1's launch, looks leaps and bounds better than the footage I've seen of this game and the way people have been talking about it. I mean, to have such low reviews on your launch day from both consumers and critics it's not getting any better. I mean, I hate to tell you. I mean, they might patch out some stuff like pop in or some frame rate issues, but it sounds to me like there's such almost an unfixable level of jank in this game. And the funny thing to me is I remember when Hitman 3 VR originally came out years ago and everyone was like, oh, this is just a waste of your time. You know, it's, it, it's I love Hitman 3, but this just isn't the best version of it. Now people are retroactively saying, hey, look, if you're going to play Hitman 3 in VR, do the old version. Because this is just terrible, terrible graphics. And, I mean, that's a lot of the things VR haters point to, right? They say, hey, look at this. Look at these PS1 graphics. And most of the time, you know, they're exaggerating. They aren't PS1 graphics, or at least Xbox 360. And 
I mean, I'm partially joking and then I'm partially not because, you know, some of the graphics are pretty rough. But when you're in the headset, it feels different. It feels immersive. It feels engaging. It feels wholly put together in the way that the graphics can't convey on flat screen. And you'd expect something similar with Hitman 3 VR Reloaded, but that just isn't the case from what it sounds like. It, it's just disheartening to hear that you have a Quest 3 title that is this poorly optimized for the headset. And it's especially, the other thing I've noticed is the gigabytes. I mean, VR games on the Quest platform are usually pretty small gigabyte wise, but they're, you know, so they're pretty well optimized in that sense. And for this to be that large and that bad is just, with that bad of graphics, it's just crazy to me. I mean, you have games like Asgard's Wrath 2, which look amazing on Quest 3, these massive 100 hour games with comparable file sizes. And that's just insane to me. And going back to the point of the graphics, it really is a bummer because this is almost fuel for people that don't want to get into VR or people that hate on VR. And it just kind of ruins the market when you have big name games like this, like Hitman 3, which is a huge, you know, it's a pretty big gaming franchise coming to VR and just being terrible, just terrible. And for someone that's new to VR, like I believe Gamertag VR said this in his video on the game, when someone who's new to VR goes to that game, and they play it. They spend thirty dollars on a huge Hitman fan. They just got their Quest Three or whatever. They play this game. Holy, it is trash. VR is just terrible. Like that would be my first impression, pretty much. I mean, I hate to say it, but if I don't have a ton of money, I just got a Quest Three or something, or I'm borrowing someone else's Quest Three to just use for a moment, and this is the first game I try on it. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have a bad outlook on VR as a whole, and I can't blame someone for that. So what this can tell us about the VR industry right now, which is things we probably should have already known, and you probably already do, I'm just restating the obvious here, but just because it's a Quest 3 exclusive does not mean it's good. And just because it is touted as made for VR, like reimagined in VR, remade in VR, does not mean it's good. And this one kind of threw me for a loop, because Hitman 3 VR again, reloaded, seems like a passion project. It, it feels something like the developers asked these other developers to make because they like VR and they like Hitman and they wanted their game in VR. So that's just a bummer to me, honestly, as a fan of Hitman, as a fan of VR. And the other thing it actually is helps me look at is Flat to VR, which if you don't know is a studio that's making officially licensed games from flat screen to VR. And God damn it, they should have done it because I know they would have done a great job. They've done amazing things. Like the people on their team have done like Outer Wilds VR. They've done uh, Half-Life 2 VR. Some of the best mods for games in VR. And it's like makes me happier that they're doing things now in that space because you can have ports like these that are just so terrible. And the last thing I'll mention really is how this makes me more worried for Meta's open store platform for the Quest. Now that we don't have a differentiator between App Lab games and Quest games, it's going to get crazy in terms of the amount of sh pure shovelware going onto the Quest platform. New users aren't going to really be able to differentiate because you have a game with like a five star rating, sure, but from like two guys and one of them's the developer. And it's just right there next to Beat Saber. I feel like it's going to be a little bit hard. You almost need a standard of quality. Right now, the Quest store is becoming like Steam. And that's okay if it was more of a hardcore oriented device but this is a device that's aimed at everyone and not everyone's very smart you know when it comes to video game related things or you know to be honest with you anything in general so i'm kind of curious how they're going to balance this and if it's going to pose any further issues because i'm personally grateful that i did my research into hitman 3 vr reloaded before buying the game because 30 dollars 25 gigabytes for something that would probably give me a headache while playing because of the lag, the jankiness, and everything else, including the graphics, we really need to foster a more open VR community, I think, to have deeper discussions regarding what type of games or what type of services we need to see implemented into the store. And I mean, man, if you're a Hitman fan of any kind, just go, just go, just go back to Xbox. Just go back to playing on a flat screen or PlayStation or whatever you want to play it on. Because I do not think this is really the best game to play in VR right now. Until we get flat to VR to get their hands on it.